Okay, so now that we have our video player supporting more formats, uh, let's take it one step further and add support for TV capture cards. Uh, here I have a TV capture card, a Hapage card, called the WinTV HVR 950Q. Um, this just happens to be the one I have laying around, and it should work with uh, many different kinds of capture cards, so let's go ahead and uh, write that. Okay, so starting off from where we left off before, um, it's really actually not going to be that much different. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a new class, and I'll just call it um, Capture Video. Uh, I'll go ahead and finish that. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy all this stuff over from here. So all of this stuff that we uh, created here, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste in here. We don't need the constructor method again, so I'll just paste right over top of that. Okay. So, um, we need our imports as well, so it's going to give us a, a lot of trouble if we don't, uh, if we don't import those. So I'll, uh, I'll copy these from here, paste them in, and it should be good. Okay, so we don't need uh, a path to the video, because we're not playing a video, we're playing uh, uh, from a capture card, so therefore we don't need this line either, and we also don't need this. Okay, so we really only need the two arguments, the path to FFmpeg, or excuse me, the file itself, the FFmpeg file, and the video that we want it to play in. At this point, we need to change a few arguments here. Now, if you're on a Windows system, this is where things become a little bit dicey, and it will be a, a lot different uh, uh, on, on your system there. So instead of having the input as the video path, what we need to do is first set a format at the very start, uh, in my case, I'm on a Linux system, system, so I'm going to use the video for Linux 2 um, format, and that's going to allow me to access some different stuff on my system, like the capture card itself. Now, if you're using Windows, you might be able to check out, I think it's called Video for Windows Cap, um, for cards that support Video for Windows. Otherwise, check out DShow. That's for Direct Show, and that should support a, a, a lot of different uh, devices as well. Um, so check that out, and of course go to FFmpeg's website, check out their documentation if you want to learn more about it. In my case, I'm going to use the uh, Video for Linux 2 format, uh, and then instead of passing in the video path, which no longer exists, I'm going to pass in the address of my device. So it's in the root device uh, dev folder, and then video 0. So I'm going to pass that in. Um, I'm also going to have to use... Uh, my my device has a crossbar, I believe, so if I just feed it in this way, it won't work, I don't think, because I need to set a channel. So if I go in here and set the channel, and the reason I'm doing this is because I have a DVD player hooked up to the RCA cable of the capture card itself. I'm not, I don't actually have a coaxial cable hooked up to it, so this, in my case, I need to change the channel to channel 1 instead of being channel 0 and that will access the the RCA uh, cables or the component cables rather than the actual TV coaxial port. So I change the channel to 1. I'm not sure if this should be here or here. We'll, we'll try it out and see what happens. We'll, we'll keep it at 48k. Uh, the audio, I'm for now I'm just going to er erase all, all the audio options. Um, just to, to kind of make this a little bit quicker here, and we're going to keep all this stuff exactly the same. So if I then save that and go back to my initial one here, I can create this variable, and, and I'll just go ff capture is what I'll call it, and it's of the capture video equals new capture video. Great. So instead of running this here, I'm going to replace this with ff capture and we're going to do the dot play and now we only need two things our file and our video and I'm just going to go ahead and run that and see what happens there it is so that's our, um, our DVD player which has Indiana Jones of course it's a great movie uh, and here's the DVD menu there so if I go over to my DVD player here I can of course uh, hit play and away it goes and there you go so there's a DVD player plugged into a TV capture card um, and fed into the Flash player with Adobe Air 
using FFmpeg as a native process. Oh, ah, one thing I should point out here. If you notice, I don't know if it comes across in the video, but you may notice that there's some interlacing issues happening here. Uh, so let's, before, before we finish, let's fix those. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to put in just two more arguments here that will, will allow FFmpeg to fix that problem. I'm going to use a filter and it's of the type video and it's called yet another deinterlacing filter, I believe. Let's take a look, see if that fixes our problem. It's hard to tell. You can only really see it when uh, there's a lot of movement on the screen. So we'll just give, we'll just give it a second here. That seems to have fixed the problem. So we don't have any of those strange lines now. So um, yeah, it looks great. So there you have it. TV capture support for air. Now again, if you're on Wind a Windows system, this is going to work a little bit differently. Like I talked about, look at look at the video for Windows capture the format, and also look at the D show. But enough of that. Great. Thanks for.